Hello everyone, today I just wanted to very quickly jump in and show you two brand new, very exciting AI features for the colorists in the newest version of DaVinci Resolve, DaVinci Resolve 20. We are all very excited about this update. And the first tool I want to talk about is new Chroma Warp tool. Here I have it opened and we'll be working with this Blackmagic clip. I just corrected it very quickly. This is before and after. And I will be using our new Chroma Warp on this second node. And we can access our Chroma Warp over here. Here we also have our old Hue Saturation Color Warper and the Chroma Luma Warper. And if you need to refresh your memory, you are welcome to watch one of my older videos where I'm explaining how they work. And just to show you how amazing the new Chroma Warp is, when we have a look at the older Color Warper, we can see that it is a grid-based system, which means that here we are able to choose how precise we want it to be using the grid. And then we can select the hue in our clip like this. And then this hue appears on our grid. And then we can just move it around to adjust the selected hue. But as we can see, I wanted to adjust only the jacket. So this old color warper is not very precise. We obviously have a lot of refining tools over here so we can refine this selection but i've always thought that there's too many of them and they are quite complicated to use but let me show you how comparing to this one our new chroma warp works so let's reset it and let's move to the chroma warp and here the first thing we can see is how clean and simple the settings are and let me show you how intuitive this tool is so here we have a few different tools we have add stroke normal mode then add stroke point to point mode, then add pinpoint, and then we've got the select tool. So let's use the normal mode first, and let's just select the hue in the clip. Okay, and now we can see that the selected hue has also appeared directly on our mesh, and it also shows the chroma range, that red circle over here. So I'll show you in a second how to adjust it. And now we can also select multiple hues like this, and they all appear on our mesh. But let me remove them and let's focus on the red hue. So now let's say that I want to change this hue to pink. So I can just grab this point and move it towards pink like this. And look how precise this selection is. But if you want to improve it, we can simply use the chroma range over here to expand it or to make it smaller. And we can also move it around to change the hue like this easily. But now let's see what would have happened if we wanted to shift this color more dramatically. Let's say that I want to turn this red into green, for example. So when we are using the normal mode, we have also shifted all of these hues on this line here towards green as well. So now in order to deselect them, we need to grab the Add Pinpoint tool and we can try to deselect all of the other hues except our red, like this. It actually works really nicely. And we could also do the same on the mesh over here. So now we have shifted only the red, but we can also make our life way easier. So let's just reset everything we have done. And now let's use the point to point mode and then let's select red again and now when I move this point towards green look what happens the point to point mode allows us to turn red into green perfectly without selecting other hues on the way and now we can for example change the exposure over here to make it more or less dense and now let's move to our second clip and here I will show you the changes that have been introduced to the magic mask tool. So let's say that I want to remove the background from this clip. I will start from setting the quality to better over here. I never use faster, I always use better. And these tools over here has stayed as in the older version. But the first change we can see is that now when selecting the object, we have these blue points instead of the stroke. So now I find it even more precise. So let's just select our person like this. And also I have my red highlight on over here so I can see my selection highlighted in red. 
And now let's say that I want to get rid of the background. So I need to create a new alpha output over here. And now let's connect these blue dots. Okay. And now when I turn on the highlight mode, I can see that my background is removed. But also I can see that our selection is not perfect over here around the bottles. And we could obviously use some of the refining tools over here. But I want to show you a new brush tool we can use. So if we want to deselect a portion of the clip, I will pick this brush with a minus. And I can simply paint over my clip to remove it like this. But let's reset it as now the size of the brush is too big. So here we can actually change the size of the brush. Like this. And now we can use a very small size of the brush. So now I will just very precisely remove the background from here. Like this. You know, sometimes we need to take our time with it. And when we are done and satisfied, we can simply track our clip exactly like we do using the previous version of the Magic Mask. I hope you liked this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and also check out my promo links below this video.